Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our series on mechanics and to this channel. Kindly subscribe, like, share, and leave your comments and suggestions at the comment section. Once again, we are looking at application of equilibrium and trusses, example two. Let's quickly look at our question and how to solve. The truss system supports the weight of a drum as shown in the diagram below. If the distance from A to D is 12 meters, determine I, the tension in the rope, I, I, the reactions at the support. And this is our diagram. Let's quickly run through it. Solution. We have been given this question and we are asked to find the tension in the rope and the reactions at the support. Anytime you are given a question like this, the first thing you need to do is to draw the free body diagram. Let us see how to draw the free body diagram. We have our structure like this. This is moving up like that. And this is also joining at that point. And we are moving also at this side like that. Good. And then we have a pulley here. This is a pulley. Let me draw it well. Sorry. So we have this point. Moving there and this side joining here. And we have a pulley at this side. And we are told that the radius of the pulley, the radius of the pulley is 0 0.3. And then we are told that the drum, the drum is hanging somewhere here. And the weight of the drum is 35 kilonewtons. 35 kilonewtons. And we are told that there's also another cable pointing to this side. This side is point G. Because it's a pin support, looking at the structure, this is a pin support. Therefore, if you have a pin support, you have reaction in the X axis, you can call this GX, and you can also have a reaction in the Y axis. We can call this GY. And then, sorry, that is not where the reactions are. The reactions, the G is not at that side. The G is at the middle, so this is G, point G. And because it's a pin support, you have the horizontal reaction, GX, and I also have the vertical reaction, which we can refer to as GY. And we are told that the distance from this to that is 4.5. From this to that is 4.5. And then we are also told that the distance from this point here to this point is five meters. And this point is A. At A, you can see that it's a rocker. This is a rocker. And if it is a rocker, it will allow us, in this case, look at looking at the position where the rocker is placed, it will allow us to move on the vertical axis. 
but it will not allow us to move in the horizontal as is. Therefore, our reaction will be horizontal. It'll be horizontal like that. And then we are told that the distance from this point A to this point here, which is D, we are told that the distance is 12 meters. 12 meters. And in drawing a free body diagram, because this side here is a cable, because this side here is a cable, we need to indicate. Cables always point away from our point of interest. Therefore, in this case, our interest will be this fully. Therefore, our cable is going to point away like that. And let's take it at the tension there is T2, and the one here is T1. Good. And we don't know the distance here, the distance from this point to that point. We don't know. Therefore, we can represent that distance with X. We can represent that distance with X. Uh, it seems there's also nothing here. Good. Okay, so now from here, we can do our analysis. First of all, because of this cable and this weight attached here, we need to first find the value of the tensional force in this cable. Therefore, from here, if this weight is our point of interest, it means that from there, our free body diagram is going to be like this. This is the cable. The cable will be pointing away like this. So this will be. T1 and then our weight, which is 35 newtons, is here. Right? And this whole structure is in equilibrium. Therefore, we can say that sum of all y will be equal to zero. And from here, we can say that T1 minus 35 will be equal to zero. And from there, we can say that T1 will be equal to 35 kilo newtons. And Looking at the pulley system, if this is T1 and this is T2, then T1 will be equal to T2. Therefore, from here, we can also see that T2 will be equal to T1, which will be equal to 35 kilo newtons. So this is point B, where the pulley is. This is where the pulley is stood. No, that is not point B. Sorry for that. We are yet determining that force in the cable or the tension in the cable. Good. Once you have been able to do that, now the next thing we need to do, we have been given the distance from A point A here to point B. And we know the distance from A up to this point. And the only thing we don't know is the horizontal distance from A up to D. Therefore, we need to calculate that. And from the Pythagoras theorem, we know that 12 hypotenuse square, hypotenuse square will be equal to the square of the vertical from this point to that point, which we are told that this is five and this is 4.5. Therefore, the total is going to be 9.5 square plus horizontal component from this point to that point square, which is x square. So from here, our x will be equal to the square root of 12 square minus 9.5 square, and x we are going to get 7.33 meters. Good. Now, always you take moment at the point where you have many unknowns. You take moment at the point where you have many unknowns. From this diagram, you realize that at point G, we have one unknown here, and we also have another unknown. We have two unknowns. Therefore, we can take moment at point G, taking moment at G. And we will take our anti-clockwise direction to be positive. 
and we are going to get is equal to zero because it's in equilibrium. Therefore, we have this force here, which is a y. No, this is a x. It is in the horizontal. Therefore, we are going to get a x. A x times the distance to where we are taking the moment from this point to that point, which is given as five. Then we you check whether it will be clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now, in this case, the force is applied like this. And this is our vertical distance. This is where we are taking the moment. Therefore, this is going to repeat over there this direction, which is anti-clockwise. And for that matter, it will be positive. And then we also pick the next force. Don't forget that now we have our T1, our T1 at this side, which is pointing downwards. We have T1 at this side, which is pointing downwards. And then we have this T2 going this direction. Good. Don't confuse with what you have done here. This one was with respect to with respect to the drum which was here. That is why the T1 was pointing upwards. But with respect to the pulley here, so if the one here is pointing, if the one here is pointing upwards, then it means that the one here will be pointing downwards according to the Newton Taylor movie. That's why the one here is pointing downwards. So we have T1 pointing downwards, and from here. The perpendicular distance from where T1 is applied will be the distance from this point to that point, which is X, plus a small distance from this side to that point, which is the radius of the pulley, which is the radius of the pulley, that is from this point to that point. And the radius of the pulley is 0 0.3. Therefore, it means that in that case, we are going to get T1, and T1 is 35 times. The distance is going to be X, which is 7.33 plus the radius of the pulley, which is 0 0.3. It is 0 0.3. But would that be clockwise or anti-clockwise? This is where we are taking our moment and the force is applied here. Now you can see that this force is going to repeat this in this direction, which is going to be clockwise and therefore it's going to be negative. And then we also have our 35, our T2, which is 35 at that side and the distance to where we are taking our moment because it is because it is a horizontal force the perpendicular distance is going to be vertical which will be from this point to that point which we already know from this point to that point as 4.5 and this small distance here will be the radius from this point here will be the radius of this point here to that point and which is 0 0.3 Therefore, it's going to give us 4.5 plus 0.3 will be equal to 0. And from there, Ax will be equal to 267.05 minus 168 all over 5. And from there, we can say that Ax will be equal to 19.5. Eight kilonewtons. Now that we have been able to determine this, we can apply other our other equilibrium equations and see that sum of all f of y will be equal to zero. And we are taking our vertical to be positive. Here we only have two forces acting in the y. We have gy and then we have t1. Therefore, we can say that gy minus t1, which we have already calculated, is equal to zero. So T1 was equal to 35, therefore GY will be equal to 35 kilonewtons. And then we can also apply our equilibrium equations in the horizontal and see that moving to the right is positive and it's equal to zero. And from there, the horizontal, we have GX, which is moving to the right and it is positive. We have AS, which is also moving to the right, it's positive. And then we have T2, which is moving to the left and therefore it's negative. Therefore, from the GX will be equal to, we have already calculated AX and T2. T2 is 35. And then AS is 19.81. Therefore, from here, GX will be equal to 15.2 kilonewtons. Now, here we have been, been able to determine all the reactions at the support. 
and you have also been able to determine the tension in our cable. That was much easier as compared to the other questions. However, if you have any questions, contributions, suggestions, you can let us know at the comment session. Once again, thank you for staying in touch and always being with us in this series. At this stage, we want to thank you very much. And we kindly ask you to subscribe, to subscribe, like, share, and also hit the notification bell. Until then, see you in our next video. Bye-bye.